So uh, our next reader is Joanna Brooke, and uh, Joanna has sent me a bio, and here it is. Uh, Joanna has self-published more than four artist books, small edition, handmade books, each book a unique work of art. These include <coughs> excuse me, Poems at the End of Time, 2013, Aphrodite is My Mother, 2014, Innocence and the Little Death, 2015, and a three-book series entitled Redaction, 2015. She is at work on a collaborative performance art project with artist Misha Goldberg, and she's very grateful to have been invited by C. Stephen Blue to read at the Eugene Festival this year. Uh, Joanna Brooke is a poet, symbolist, and muse. She, I can always use a muse. Yes. She is also an artist, a ukulele player, tarot reader, homemaker, gardener, receptionist, and medium. Originally from Boston, Massachusetts, she has lived in Eugene since 2005. Uh, she was the recipient of the Academy of American Poets Prize, a featured reader at the Poetics Festival in Corvallis in April of this year, and she has also read by invitation for the Lane Writers series, which Joan was just talking about. One sentence biography. I asked my poets to give me a one sentence biography just for fun. So this is what uh, jo Joanna said. A breeze flickers the points of sunlight on the creek laughing over stones. Please welcome Joanna Brooke. inspired by Joan's poem, The Virgin Poem, and I wasn't going to read this poem because it's a virgin. <laughs> I've only shared it once in a kitchen with one other person, so it's very, very fresh, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the challenge. And uh, uh, a lot of my poems people call confessional poetry, and I want to let you know this is not a true story. Okay, this is not a true story. And the thing that I love about this poem, you'll see, is that it has a poem within the poem. This makes me excited. It's called The Necessary House. Could you go a little bit back from the mic? I'm too close. Is this better? You can hear me more clearly? Okay. The Necessary House. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> Why? Not ready yet. Too late, too late. Too new, too fresh. Okay. Now here's another one. This one's even fresher, actually. I just wrote this one for this event. And it's an acrostic poem. Does anyone know what an acrostic poem is? It's, yeah, it's when you um, make a word or a phrase with the first letter of each line. So if you were to read the first letter of each line of this poem, it would say, it does say actually, Eugene is a great town. Aww. Eugene throws me through a break in time. Under a rainbow bridge, dirty kids get industrious. Eugene takes me on a trip at night into clouds of red moon smoke. Eugene with her little free libraries, and I grow older first, now I am young again. Say, isn't Eugene a great town? And Eugene at the river's bend, going swiftly toward real-time self-sufficiency. In Eugene, she keeps us on her toes. A crowd of goblins descends and peers in the windows, wondering if they can eat us, but we shoo them away. Oh, Eugene, whose gardens I adore to walk through, now is your moment, Eugene. This is a, a poem in a form from the 13th century. It's called a triolet. Actually, I wrote three triolets. 
And we're at a very special moment in time. Um, I don't know if, if anyone's aware, but astronomically, um, the planet Venus is not visible at night. And for 40 days and 40 nights, every 18 months, the planet Venus disappears. And yes, this is the same 40 days and 40 nights that Noah was on the ark and other major events in the Bible took place. So that's happening right now. Um, Venus will be back and she'll rise in the east as the morning star and this poem is about this astronomical <coughs> event. They say the evening star is blessed, though she lingers long and long. Her sparkling heart holds no distress. They say the evening star is blessed, the price of love not yet assessed, her absence from the sky anon. They say the evening star is blessed, though she lingers long and long. They say the 40 nights are blessed, as the 40 days she's gone, though our fears may tighten in our breast they say the 40 nights are blessed, unearthing truth so far repressed. Though love plays folly to Oberon, they say the 40 nights are blessed, as the 40 days she's gone. They say the morning star is blessed as she glimmers in the dawn, her eagerness to start professed. They say the morning star is blessed, arise, she calls, Begin your quest. The page awaits what's not yet drawn. They say the morning star is blessed as she glimmers in the dawn. Thank you. My mother. My mother is a pool of salt water, sometimes there sometimes dry, sometimes nourishing the fronded creatures, abandoning them to harsh sun only at the whim of the tide. As the pool of salt water, she has no control over whether she exists or not. She may be a depression in the ground or among rocks. When empty, the creatures she contains suck themselves into themselves or seal themselves shut against the lack of water until in the rush of the first next wave, my mother becomes full to splashing, glittering in the sun and sparkling with the flash of schools of tiny fish and illuminated by the slow creep of orange and purple stars. As the tide pool, my mother has no control over whether she exists or not. So I read this novel that my friend recommended. It's her favorite novel. And then I wrote this poem. It's, it's a poem for Misha. She's sitting right there in the striped dress. After Kafka at the shore. After, after Kafka at the shore. This, I want to just pause and look for a moment and say this is somewhat of a manifesto for me and my desire here with this manifesto is to remove the rite of passage from incest, okay? Just, let's just take the incest piece right out of it. I dreamed in the darkness an opening to the forest through which we both escaped, each in our separate ways. Oedipus is not a myth. I dreamed in the darkness a field of wild fire, you and I walking through it, hand in hand, unburned. We know what we're doing. 
I dreamed in the lightning hours and opening through a stone and umphalos we put our hands on and clamored through, stay out of my room. You and I so daring forever. I glimpse you through the forest on your own path, parallel to mine, running and leaping as a deer. Remember, if you know any children, don't have sex with them. Entanglements don't exist in this forest. I dreamed in the minutes that darken by hours. The clear new green of the forest reveals you at the burbling spring. Dreaming the darkness is filled with color. We meet live as fast running forest creatures, ecstatic in plunging our mouths into the forest water, the smallest fern frond stuck to your heel. Thank you so much, Joanna. The Burbling Spring. I really like that a lot. Okay, so um, we're going to take a short break and uh, just reconnoiter a little bit, and then we'll be back with our next featured reader. We might do a little spontaneous stuff before that, so uh, we hope you join us in a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> 